بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين الحمد لله we have Tawfiq to witness another month of Ramadan and as usual in the second ten nights I have the honor of being with you and talking for this year I thought it would be very relevant and beneficial for all of us to see what spiritual aids we have, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made available for the seekers of His nearness, seekers of piety and perfection. This is also in line with my discussion about hope that I had it in the middle of the month of Sha'ban. As I said in that lecture, this world is not neutral to goodness and badness, let alone being a corrupt or vicious world. Not only it's not vicious and corrupt, it's not even neutral to goodness and badness. It is a very good, enlightened world. Because it is created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is the absolute goodness, the absolute beauty, the absolute light. And everything is created بالحق, with observation of the truth. So the world is prepared for people who want to grow. The example that can help a lot is the example of a person who has vast knowledge, indeed in our case unlimited knowledge, who has vast experiences, vast resources, he loves education, and with all the knowledge, experiences, and resources, and the love that he has, he makes a plan of making a school for educating people. Can you imagine that this school which is designed and run by such person would be more suitable for people who don't want to learn or would be equal? No, it would be actually opposite. Everything is made and prepared for education, for growth, but not by force. Yes, people can go to this school, have the best program, best curriculum, best teachers, best syllabus, best environment, best facilities, and still they decide not to study. That's possible. Because education should come, especially if it is moral education, if it is character building, should come voluntarily. But the whole setting is in favor of those who want to grow. So, this world for people who are seekers of virtues and nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and perfection is much more comfortable, much more pleasant and as I will explain inshallah in these lectures, much more helping and assisting 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran he says that this world is the world in which people have different plans some people just work for dunya some people just work for akhirah or virtues along with dunya and each of them may receive some help but the main help is for seekers of virtues and piety let me start with these three ayat from surat isra chapter 17 of the quran as you know is called surat isra because it talks about the, the night journey the story of the night journey of prophet from mecca to masjid al-aqsa to jerusalem so in this surah verse 18 is this a'udhu billahi min ash rajim man kana yuridu al-'ajilah ajjalna lahu fiha ma nasha liman nurid those who want ajilah ajilah means the quick one the instant one the long term interest and desires they have means this dunya whoever wants dunya okay we also give him quickly in dunya if someone has done everything for the sake of dunya if someone has really made efforts for dunya he would see his efforts also in dunya allah would not totally deprive them if you are only thinking of dunya you study hard in order to get certificate and good job okay you will get it if you are a farmer who works hard to have a good harvest and then make money okay you will get it but this is not the only possibility so mankana yuridu al we will also make it quick for them for those that we want but if they don't have saved anything for akhirah then they will be empty handed in akhirah then i skip some words then the next ayah and those who seek the hereafter they want to save for the next life and they make efforts it's not you say i want akhirah but you don't do anything amir al-mu'mini said in nahj al-balaghi la takun mimman yarju al-akhirata bi ghayra amal don't be like the people that they say we have great interest in akhirah we have lots of hope in akhirah but they don't do anything like a student who says i want the best result but he doesn't study and he just hopes that there is luck luck is not there if you don't work there is no such a thing as luck you have to work so Man arad al akhirat wa sa'a laha sa'yaha. Not only he wants akhirah, he also makes efforts which are proportionate to what he wants. What do you want to achieve? You want to get A plus, you want to get A, you want to get B, you want to get C, you want just to pass. What do you want? you have to make proportionate amount of efforts and this needs iman you cannot just do some actions lacking iman then these people allah says mashkura. these are the people that their efforts are thanked means allah is grateful Allah would not let their efforts be wasted 
It's impossible you do something for akhirah and would be wasted. No matter who knows, no matter who is watching you, who is aware of what you are doing, if you do something for Allah, if you do something for akhirah, mashkura. Your efforts will be thanked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is shakur, He is very grateful. Then, in the verse 20, Allah gives us a general rule. We would help the first group. We would also help the second group from the favors and givings of your Lord. And His giving is not mahdur means is not stopped is not limited so whether you work for dunya or for your akhirah whether you work for short-term success or long-term success the world helps people who make efforts people who are lazy and don't do anything even in dunya they don't get anywhere but people who work hard. There are people who work for dunya, but very hard. They study, they plan. They sometimes for many weeks, they don't sleep. Don't think that people who are successful in dunya, they just, you know, watch TV and then all of a sudden they get the power and the resources and, you know, recognition. This world is the world for success of anyone who makes efforts. Even if it is not in the best direction, it is just for dunya, still you will be receiving some help. If it is for akhirah, you will receive much more help. So, this world, as I said, it's not neutral it's not an empty a spiritless a space that you go and do something and interact with other people and the whole environment does not react no we are all in a very special world which has its own rules and regulations it's under Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's lordship and guidance. So, everyone in this world may receive lots of responses from the world. And what inshallah I want to discuss with you in these nights is to see what sources of assistance, of energy of help are there for us if we want to move towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah we'll talk about different tools that we have about dua about tawakkul about tafiz about tawassul about salat about prayer there are many things that alhamdulillah are available for us to benefit from we are not left alone here. We are not left without helper and support here. We are being watched and help is available. Just you need to ask for help. In Surah Al-Ham, there is an ayah in the middle of Surah, which I think might be like the heart of Surah Al-Hamd. Surah Al-Hamd in its entirety is extremely important. It's opening of the Quran. It's a summary of the Quran. It is the manifesto of Islam. 
But inside Surah Al-Hamd, in the middle of Surah, as the heart of the Surah, in my humble understanding is, إِجَّاكَ نَعْبُدْ وَإِجَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ That connects the first part to the second part. In the beginning, we start with praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and describing Him. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Malik Yawm al-Din. Up to this point, it's a praise for Allah. It's a description of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After Iyaka na'bud wa Iyaka nasta'in is dua. Ihdina as-sirata al-mustaqim. Sirata al-ladheena an'amta alayhim ghayr al-maghdub alayhim wa la'l-dhalmin. So you have two different narration, two different way of talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first by praising Him and second by praying to Him but in between you clarify your position what is your position what is your role if He is Rabbul Alameen if He is Rahman Rahim if He is Malik Yawm al-Din what is your role إِيَّاكَ نَعْمُدْ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ My role is that I have come to this recognition that you are the only one to be worshipped. This is my achievement. I cannot create myself. I cannot create anything. I have neither power in dunya nor power in akhirah i am very limited because i am totally dependent on you but my great achievement is that i have come to clear understanding that i only worship you and it is not only me I speak on behalf of my community, the community of believers, na'abud, not a'abud. Because as we said again and again, Quran wants us to have the mentality of we, not me. Even if you are saying your salat alone, you have to say Surah al -Ham and you have to say Iyaka na'bud wa Iyaka nasta'in At the end also you have to say Assalamu alayna wa ala ibadillah You cannot say Assalamu alayya We So Iyaka na'bud I have come to full recognition of this fact that you are the only one who deserves, who is entitled for our worship. It's only by worshiping you that we grow, we rise. If you worship anyone other than God, we go down. It's only by worshiping Him that we rise. Our potentials will flourish. And we only ask assistance from you. Who is there to offer assistance other than you? If you are Rabbul Alameen, if you are in charge of the world, if you are in charge of dunya and akhirah, if you are the only creator, who else is there to offer help? independent from you no one can offer help no one can help himself let alone help me who can give help to himself who can stop bad coming to him or remove bad after he has come to him or bring good to himself no one has any control yes 
under your lordship in the world that you have created you have given us limited power to do good to each other to help each other you told us to help each other but it is all under you it is all with your blessing and permission and leave otherwise no one can help even himself I have no control over anything about myself, whether it be dunya or akhirah. I cannot benefit myself or harm myself, let alone to benefit you or harm you. I cannot cause my own life or my own revival. How can I help you with that? I cannot give rest to myself. How can I give to you? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made this world a world in which we are permitted, we are given blessing of helping each other or harming each other or denying each other. But don't forget everyone is functioning in the world that he has created and he has set up the rules so in the end of the day whatever anyone is doing is under him ibrahim salam very beautifully said that my lord is the one that yotremuni wa yasqeen he is the one who feeds me. He is the one who gives me water. <coughs> if I become ill, I go to doctor. I take the prescription. But I know my healing comes from him. My rest comes from him. My food comes from him. My knowledge comes from him. My success comes from him. I am not naive to only see the first and immediate contacts. If your father or mother or brothers and sisters and community members or other people help you, don't be naive and just see the immediate hands. Open your eyes and you would see it's Allah who has pushed them towards you. Who made the heart of your mother full of love for you? Who made the heart of your father full of love for you? It's wrong to think only it's father and mother. He created them and he put love for you in their hearts. So, if there is any help, anything good, it comes from him. So he is the main source of help and assistance. And inshallah, in the coming nights, we'll go to explore this and we would see how he helps and how you can ask for more help. He helps you, but he helps you more if you ask for it. You must ask for help. You must benefit from the tools, from the aids that he has provided you with. If he has given you the ability of making dua, as one of the best tools benefit from dua if he has made you possible and capable of using tawakkul use tawakkul and inshallah i will explain tawakkul is a tool tawakkul is not just to say we put our trust in god tawakkul can change the overall balance of power in your favor tafwiz tawassul 
all our powerful aids and tools that we can benefit. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these moments of approaching Maghrib in the months of Ramadan to accept us with all problems that we have as his guests. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive all our sins and mistakes and shortcomings. And because of his favor, because of his mercy and love, to include us among his servants that he is pleased with them and in this month of Ramadan he grants them protection from fire and permission to remain in heaven permanently we ask for shifa for all people who are ill and we ask rahman maghfara for all people who are passed away we ask Allah to make our life easy with afia and to Keep us and our community away from anything which is bad and disliked, whether it be worldly or religiously.